to understand the difference between heat and temperature, I will give you an example. If we have two blocks of iron, one is at 60 degrees Celsius and one is at 20 degrees Celsius. And then we place them next to each other. What do you think would happen? Welcome to Schooler, your online school. You may check your understanding by solving the individual questions. And good luck. If we place an iron block at 60 degrees Celsius in contact with another at 20 degrees Celsius, then energy will be transferred from the warmer object to the colder one till both blocks have similar temperatures. So the energy transferred between these two objects with different temperatures is called heat. So from now on, the definition for heat is the energy transferred between two objects with different temperatures. But if you want to define temperature, temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is. To know which block is warmer from these two iron blocks, we measure the temperature. Usually, it's difficult to measure the heat stored in an object. While to measure the temperature, it's easy. We simply use the thermometer. One thing to mention here is that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in an object. For example, in the 60 degrees Celsius block, the particles are vibrating faster than the 20 Celsius degrees block. And this is because they have more kinetic energy. Usually heat and other forms of energy are measured in units called joules, while temperature is measured in degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. Usually we use Kelvin in chemistry. Another difference between heat and temperature is that heat is an extensive property while temperature is an intensive property. Extensive property depends on the amount of the sample, while intensive property does not depend on the amount of the sample. Let me give you an example. Imagine that we have two flasks of boiling water. One contains 100 milliliters of water, while the other one contains 300 milliliters of water. For sure, to boil the 300 milliliters of water, we need more heat. So heat depends on the amount for the sample and it's an extensive property. Keep in mind that both flasks have the same temperature, which is 100 degrees Celsius. So temperature does not depend on the amount of the sample and it's an intensive property. Stay tuned since we're going to explain what we mean by enthalpy and how to determine the enthalpy change using the molar heat capacity. Enthalpy, which is symbolized by the capital letter H, it is equal to the internal energy added to the pressure exerted by the system on its surrounding multiplied by its volume. It's impossible to calculate the internal energy, but change in enthalpy can be easily calculated, especially when pressure is constant. Since the change in the enthalpy will be equal to the heat transferred, which is symbolized by the small letter Q, and it can be calculated using the formula Q equal NC delta T, where N is the number of moles, and its unit is moles. Delta T, it's the change in the temperature, it's T final minus T initial, final temperature minus initial temperature, the unit for that is Kelvin. And finally, the capital letter C, it's for molar heat capacity, which is the energy needed as heat to increase the temperature of one mole of pure substance by one degree Kelvin. And its unit is joules per Kelvin dot mole. And now is the time to practice a couple of questions using the following formula. Calculate the energy as heat needed to increase the temperature of 5 moles of silver by 20K. The molar heat capacity of silver is 25.3. Usually in such questions, I like my students to write the given. It would give you more time to organize your ideas. And also it would give you more time to check if there is any units to convert. Calculate the energy so Q is missing. 5 moles is the number of moles. 
increased by 20k this is the change in temperature delta t it's equal to 20k and finally molar heat capacity it's equal to 25.3 we write the formula q equal nc delta t and then we replace the variables with their values we do the math we cancel the units that are common between numerators and denominators and the answer is going to be 2530 joules let's practice another exercise determine the final temperature when 300 joules of energy as heat is transferred to 0.2 moles of nitrogen at 298 kelvin the molar heat capacity of nitrogen is 29.1 joules per kelvin dot mole we start with the given as usual final temperature is missing 300 joules is the heat number of moles equals 0.2 moles temperature initial equal to 298 kelvin and the molar heat capacity is 29.1 we start with the formula q equal nc delta t we need to calculate delta t so we isolate it we divide both sides by nc so delta t is equal to q divided by nc we replaced the variables with their values we divide the 300 by 0 0.2 multiplied by 29.1 the answer to the nearest tenth is going to be 51.5 k you know that delta t is equal to t final minus t initial then t final is going to be equal to t initial plus delta t t initial is 298 kelvin and delta t is 51.5 kelvin so the answer is going to be 349.5 kelvin one more thing to explain before we finish up this video is the relation between specific heat and molar heat capacity to find the relation between specific heat and molar heat capacity let me write their units first the unit for specific heat is joules per kelvin dot gram while the unit for molar heat capacity is joules per kelvin dot moles specific heat is the energy needed as heat to increase the temperature of one gram of a pure substance by one degree kelvin while molar heat capacity is the energy required as heat to increase the temperature of one mole of a pure substance by one degree kelvin so the difference between specific heat and molar heat capacity is that specific heat we heat one gram and molar heat capacity we heat one mole in my videos i'm going to use cp as a symbol for specific heat and capital c for molar heat capacity in some books the symbol for specific heat is a small letter s to convert the unit of specific heat to the unit of the molar heat capacity we have to multiply it with a gram per mole but the gram per mole is the unit for the molar mass so from now on the relation between specific heat and molar heat capacity is that specific heat multiplied by the molar mass will give us the molar heat capacity and now you are ready to solve the end of video questions if you are not repeat the video again otherwise solve the questions put your answer in the comments section if you have any question that i didn't cover in the video please share it with me in the comments section share this video with your friends subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more videos see you in other videos and good luck